Hi all, thanks for watching. Uh, I've had this Yamaha RSV673 for about five years and it's done pretty good for me. I like the sound quality uh, and it was a great buy for the price. So um, about two weeks ago it suddenly lost sound. I uh, didn't have a, enough time to actually look at it until a few days ago. Um, the funny thing was that all the video switching worked, so I could see the video but couldn't hear the sound. Uh, all the menus worked, um, but I was not able to see the firmware version, which kind of made me uh, think that we had a problem on the processor board. Um, so anyways, I tried resetting it to the factory defaults. That doesn't didn't work. Um, I let it sit overnight to drain the capacitor. Uh, stored energy that didn't work either um, so at that point I just started doing a little bit of research on the internet and uh, found a, that it's a fairly common problem with these uh, receivers um, all right so I decided to um, to fix the unit or try to fix the unit and uh, to get into it it's pretty easy uh, there's two screws on each side, and you can see here there's multiple screws uh, on the back panel. Uh, all these screws in this area uh, connect HDMI connections that are soldered to the motherboard, so you definitely need to remove all these screws in that area. Um, all right, so once you're inside, uh, it's pretty easy to see you've got couple of uh, connectors here. Let me just zoom in a bit. Uh, you've got some connectors that are in yellow uh, and then you've got these plugs over here that I've got in a green color uh, that are connected to this board that's laying sideways in the chassis. Uh, you also have three screws inside the box. You've got two right here and over here you've got a single screw holding the two boards together. Um, these cables are fairly easy. Most of them are just friction fit in and you just pull them out. There's really no way to screw it up. You can't uh, put one cable in for another uh, or anything like that. Pretty simple stuff. The only ones I had a little bit of trouble with were these uh, very rudimentary style cables here. I don't know what the technical term is for them, but uh, they're just wires that press into a, a fitting and uh, Again, you can't screw those up unless you really, really try. So pretty easy box to work on. Didn't have any real problems uh, getting into uh, the machine or working with the system board. Okay, so this is the main board that I was uh, concerned with here. It's got the processor, the sound processors on it. Uh, and I'm assuming these are HDMI uh, chips, so on and so forth for uh, processing video and sound. Uh, you can see there's little marks on each one of these chips. I bought this unit refurb, so I suspect somebody was in this box before uh, and just kind of marked through each one of those chips uh, as they fixed the box or troubleshot the box. All right, so what I did is decided to bake the board. Um, this is apparently a fairly common practice. Uh, if you think you might have some solder, um, bad solder joints or something like that, under one of those chips. Um, some of those chips you just you can't access very easily so this is almost the only way to really uh, redo those solder joints. Um, one thing I'll uh, say is that I <laughs> left this capacitor, this is the only electrolytic capacitor on the board. Uh, I left it in place by mistake and as you can see from the top here it's kind of bulged out and it's begun leaking. So I did replace that one with a brand new capacitor. Um, if I was doing it again, I'd just pull the capacitor out before I baked the board in the oven. So I set the oven to 390 degrees Fahrenheit, and I baked it for 15 minutes, and then I let it slowly cool down. While I was baking it, I was making sure that you know there were no vibrations uh, around the board or anything like that. So um, that's the method I used. Uh, it did work, and um, the machine is back up and running. When I first turned the machine on, or the receiver on, 
the first thing I wanted to do was a firmware upgrade. Um, so I don't know if there were just new firmwares available and for some reason it didn't see those before or if the board was set back to some default firmware level. Uh, at any rate, it did the firmware update and the, and the receiver is working uh, fantastic. So uh, it worked great for me. Uh, I won't say that it's going to work for everybody. Um, you may have, you know, your mileage may vary on this. So um, just as a word of caution, if you're not comfortable with it, uh, I wouldn't just start in, in and uh, try this methodology because it may uh, do other damage that I'm not aware of. So again, it worked great. And if you try it, good luck. Oops, I spoke too soon. So this worked for about two weeks for me. And uh, after about two weeks, it started uh, making a popping noise. And, um, and then I started having the same problem again. Um, so I decided to pull a board again and bake it again with the same method. Uh, that worked for about a week. And then um, it failed again. Um, pretty much the same way that it uh, has always. So um, I decided to try to narrow down what chip is actually causing the problem. And it turned out to be this DTS slash, um, uh, you know, some processor <clears throat> that you can see on the board. And it's a Texas instrument chip. And um, it uh, turned out to be the actual problem. So I narrowed that down through probably five different um, applications of a heat gun. Uh, it, it turns out that it's not a soldering problem um, on this chip uh, because I never did actually melt the solder, but I heated the chip up enough to do something inside of that chip to actually make it work. Um, so again, it's this uh, Texas, Texas Instruments uh, Dolby slash DTS chip that you can see on the um, motherboard there. So, um, so I thought, you know, maybe if I keep this chip cool, uh, it'll work better for me. Uh, so I got a heat sink and I applied heat sink grease and uh, just for temporary purposes taped it down. Uh, that did not work. It failed again within uh, a couple of days. So uh, at this point, um, I've decided that this is not something I'm going to be able to fix myself. Uh, so I decided to pull the uh, DTS chip off the motherboard and just take a look and see what's going on under the covers. So this is what I saw uh, over on the left hand side. You can see the chip flipped over after I got it off. You can see that I ruined some of the traces um, when I pulled that chip off, so I didn't get a, a complete desoldering job done on it. But uh, at any rate, uh, once the chip was off, uh, you can see the silicon wafer, uh, or what looks like it's a silicon wafer. Um, and it kind of looks like along the edges of that wafer, it's got connectors that connect into that metal band that runs around the perimeter of the chip. Uh, center. So um, I'm not sure if that's where the problems lay uh, with this design, but there's something fundamentally wrong with uh, the chip design uh, with this box. So at this point, I decided not to put any work, more work into it and just purchase a new uh, receiver. So uh, at the end of the day, this fix is a temporary fix only. Um, it may work for some of you out there um, to be a permanent fix, but it was not definitely not a permanent fix for me. Um, I tried uh, multiple different ways to fix it. Uh, after about six or seven tries, I just uh, decided it's a loss. So um, that was it. Thanks for watching.